Autumn olive is a fast-growing shrub that can form dense thickets and take over. This invasive plant is especially common in reclaimed mining sites and other disturbed high light areas like roadsides, fields, grasslands, and open woodlands. Promoted for many years, we now know that autumn olive is too much of a good thing and not a plant you want on your property. In this edition of Pesky Plants, I'll introduce this invasive plant, why it is a problem, and how you can control it. What is autumn olive? Autumn olive, Eliagnus umbulata, is a rapidly growing early colonizing species that is able to outcompete native plants, especially on poor quality sites. Its roots have bacteria in it that make autumn olive better able to fix nitrogen. This lets it thrive, especially in nutrient-deprived soils where other plants might struggle. Autumn olive is easy to pick out because its leaves have a shiny silver color on their undersides, like you can see in this picture. And it's a multi-stemmed dense shrub that grows thickly and can form a dense thicket layer that excludes other species in a range of medium to high light settings. Autumn olive is native to Asia, but it was promoted for many years in the US because of its ability to rapidly thrive in poor sites as a windbreak and in revegetation of disturbed areas because the berries and cover it creates are used by some wildlife and because its abundant berries can also be eaten by humans, typically processed into fruit, leather, or jelly. However, it's now apparent that the negatives outweigh the positive attributes of autumn olive. In Kentucky's woodlands, it's the biggest threat in areas in and around reclaimed mines, which were commonly planted with it, but you can also find it in a range of other areas. Autumn olive can grow into a large shrub reaching 20 feet tall, perhaps even taller on some really high light situations, almost a small tree. It produces many stems per plant and has a dense spreading form. Branches may also have occasional spines, which can be hazardous as well as painful if you're trying to work your way through an area with lots of autumn olive. Its leaves are light green on the upper surface with a distinctive silvery color on the underside, created by silvery scales there. There aren't too distinct otherwise. They're kind of oval shaped, a couple inches long with smooth edges, and they're alternately arranged on stems. As with many other invasive shrubs in our area, autumn olive leafs out early and keeps its leaves until later in the fall than most native plants. In the spring, it produces abundant white to yellow flowers that are fragrant. These develop into berries in the late summer and fall that start out green and then turn red over time. These berries are eaten by birds and can be spread long distances that way. There are some potential lookalikes to autumn olive, um, but many of these include other invasive species you don't want to see. The closest lookalikes to autumn olive are its cousins, Russian olive and thorny olive, which are also invasive. Uh, while the two can look very similar, the leaves of Russian olive have a silvery sheen on the top as well as the bottom and narrower leaves. And thorny olive has a less tree-like form than autumn olive. It has larger leaves and more thorns. The fruits of each of these also look different, but regardless, all are invasive plants to be on the lookout for and remove if you find. As with any invasive plant, managing autumn olive requires patience and persistence. Prevention is the best management option for any invasive plant, so don't plant autumn olive and get rid of it as soon as possible. Management approaches really depend on the severity of the infestation and what else is growing with the invasive plant that you might want to retain, if anything. Because it commonly forms extensive dense thickets with nothing else growing intermixed, management of autumn olive should prioritize where the greatest impact can be had. While this varies, many land managers use a best first approach, starting with their highest priority areas where management there can have a big impact and move out from those areas. Here you can see three different settings of autumn olive, one plant growing on its own, one plant that's growing mixed in with a lot of trees that might wanna be retained, and then a dense thicket with nothing else. Each of those is gonna have its own management approaches that would be more suited to those situations. Seedlings and very young plants can be pulled up either by hand or with tools to assist you or managed by repeated cutting or grazing. But management of larger infestations typically involves the use of systemic herbicides. 
Mechanical, mechanical removal alone of large plants on a large scale will result in extensive site disturbance, which is great for establishing new invasives. Plus, it will likely leave root fragments that can grow again. If you cut without using an herbicide, that's going to result in rapid, dense resprouts. The fact uh, that autumn olive leaves out earlier than natives and keeps its leaves longer can be used in management both to detect it easily during these windows of time as well as to give you some windows of time when foliar herbicide spray is unlikely to impact valuable native plants that you want to retain. So an early season, that early leaf out gives you a time when you can really pick up on autumn olive and other invasive shrubs. In the late season, late fall, a great time for foliar herbicide spray as long as autumn olive has not begun to turn color or lose any of its leaves. With a limited number of plants or with plants growing mixed with desirable species, cut stump and basil bark herbicide application can be good options for management of autumn olive since they will target those individual plants but not impact other things nearby. And there are a number of effective herbicides for this approach, including triclopyr, which is commonly used. There are many different triclopyr formulations that may be better suited for different contexts and application techniques, as well as additional surfactants and dyes that can make this work more effective and easier. Remember to always follow the label. Not only will this give you directions and information on how to be safe and keep the environment around you safe while you're doing it, but it's also the law. For more extensive infestations, one common strategy is to prepare an area by mowing, bush hogging for smaller plants, or using a forestry head for larger tree-sized autumn olive, followed by, creating, uh, by treating cut stumps with herbicide, or using a foliar herbicide spray of new foliage later in the season or the following year when it has sprouted back. But other plants don't have their leaves. Um, there have been even a few examples of aerial herbicide spray with helicopters to treat heavily infested area. There are many different effective herbicides for this approach. Long-term, continued scouting and management will be needed. Seeds will likely grow from the seed bank and new seeds will be deposited by birds. In some cases, prescribed fire can be a useful part of a long-term autumn olive management approach, although note that fire alone is probably not going to be sufficient to control it because it will only be top-killed and it will re-sprout vigorously. Thanks for joining me today and learning a little bit about the invasive plant autumn olive. If you want to learn more, make sure to check us out online and follow us on social media. Thanks for fighting invasive plants and promoting our healthy and diverse native plant communities.